Hello, everyone. Welcome to this quick video presentation on ICD-10 manual mortality coding, which is part of the video series on ICD-10 manual mortality coding. In this video, we will focus on explaining the starting point steps one through five. Please consider watching all videos in the series to improve your understanding of ICD-10 manual mortality coding. If you are interested in learning more on related cause of death topics, medical certification of cause of death and automated ICD coding, please consider watching the informational videos also available on the Unit for Strengthening Cause of Death Data YouTube channel. My name is Dr. Yusuf Hamed, and I'm a gynecologist and public health consultant based in Tanzania, but with the experience in training coders in many countries. I support ICD-10 manual mortality coding trainings for new and experienced coders and have extensive experience in training doctors on medical certificate of cause of death in this quick video, I will explain some basic concepts on ICD mortality coding that are important for coders and stakeholders engaged in cause of death activities to understand. An important concept in applying ICD coding rules is understanding the term starting point. The starting point is the condition or event that started the sequence of acceptable causal relationships ending with the terminal cause of death. In a correctly completed certificate, the condition reported on the lowest line in part one is the starting point. If the certificate is not correctly filled out, the condition on the lowest line in part one may not be the starting point. The starting point may be reported somewhere else. A condition that is provisionally considered as the starting point could be caused by something else. For example, the starting point may change several times as the instructions are applied to the certificate. There are eight starting point steps. The step-by-step -step instructions of each step are described in ICD-10, Volume 2, Section 421. In today's brief informational video, I'll review steps 1 to 5. We will cover steps 6 to 8 in another informational video, as well as the modification rules. Please keep an eye out for those separate videos. Let's start with step SP1, single cause on certificate. If there is only one condition reported on the certificate in either part one or part two, this is the starting point and it is also the underlying cause. Take a look at the examples on the screen. Each example has a single cause on the certificate either in part one or part two. Since you have identified the starting point with step SP1, you can next go to step M1, special coding instructions on linkages and other provision. Note, this is updated from the former instruction. Next, go to step M4. Now, let's look at step SP2, only one line used in part one. There are two points on this step that I will review. The first point is if the certifier has used only one line in part one, but has entered two or more conditions on this line, you select the first mentioned condition as the tentative starting point. Take a look at the example on the screen, which has two conditions listed on only one line. Using step SP2, you select myocardial infarction as the starting point because it is mentioned first on the certificate. Next, you go to step SP6, which I will explain later. The second point that is important to review for step SP2 is if only one condition is reported in part one, but one or more conditions are reported in part two. Take a look at the example on the screen, which has one condition in part one and one condition in part two. 
Myocardial infarction is mentioned first on the certificate and is the tentative starting point. Next, go to step SP6. Now, let's look at step SP3. More than one line used in part one. First cause on lowest line explains all entries above. If there are conditions reported on more than one line in part one, and if all the conditions reported on the lines above the lowest used line in part one can be caused by the first condition on the lowest used line, then select the condition on the lowest line as the tentative starting point. Next, go to step SP6. Take a look at the example on the screen which has more than one line used in part one and the first cause on the lowest line, stomach cancer, explains all entries above bronchopneumonia, liver metastasis, and pulmonary edema. Here are some additional notes to consider. One, if all conditions on the lines above the lowest used line in part one cannot be caused by the first condition on the lowest used line, get clarification from the certifier. If no further information is available, go to step SP4. Two, it is not necessary to assess the causal relationship between conditions reported on the lines above the lowest used line, provided that the condition on the lines above the lowest used line can be due to the condition reported first on the lowest used line. Take a look at the example on the screen in which liver metastasis, pulmonary edema, and bronchopneumonia can all be caused by stomach cancer. More than one line is used in part one. Stomach cancer is the first cause on the lowest line, and it explains all entries above it. An important point to consider with step SP3 is duration. The condition mentioned first on the lowest used line may still have caused all conditions reported on the lines above, if none of them has a duration that is longer than that of the condition mentioned first in the lowest used line. Take a look at the example on the screen in which liver metastasis and bronchopneumonia can be caused by stomach cancer. Bronchopneumonia cannot cause liver metastasis, and the bronchopneumonia has a shorter duration than the liver metastasis. This means stomach cancer is a tentative starting point. There are some additional notes to consider in determining the starting point. One, the accepted and rejected sequences are listed in the Special Instruction ICD-10, Volume 2, Section 423. Stated relationships that are not listed as rejected should be accepted as far as possible. They reflect the certifier's opinion about the causes leading to death and should not be disregarded lightly. Three, the decision tables offers the final resolution on accepted causal relationship between two cause pairs. Now, let's look at step SP4. First cause on lowest used line does not explain all entries above, but a sequence ends with the terminal condition. There are two points on this step that I will review. The first point is, if there is only one sequence ending with a terminal condition, find the starting point of this sequence. This is the new tentative starting point. Next, go to step SP6. Take a look at the example on the screen. Cerebral infarction cannot cause liver metastasis but liver metastasis can be due to stomach cancer. Therefore, stomach cancer is a tentative starting point. The second point is, if there are two or more sequences of conditions or events ending with the terminal condition, identify the first mentioned sequence as described in section 413 and find the starting point of this first mentioned sequence. Next, go to step SP6. Take a look at the example on the screen. Atherosclerosis cannot cause liver metastasis, 
there are three acceptable sequences on the certificate. Bronchopneumonia caused by cerebral infarction in its turn caused by atherosclerosis. Two, bronchopneumonia caused by cerebral infarction in its turn caused by stomach cancer. Three, bronchopneumonia caused by liver metastasis in its turn caused by stomach cancer. But the first mentioned sequence is pneumonia caused by cerebral infarction in its turn caused by atherosclerosis. Consequently, atherosclerosis is the tentative starting point. Finally, let's review step SP5, no sequence in part one. Note that step SP5 applies only to conditions in part one. A common certification error is the listing of causes in incorrect or illogical order. If there is no sequence ending with the terminal condition, then the terminal condition is also the tentative starting point. Next, go to step SP6. Take a look at the example on the screen. Atherosclerosis cannot cause liver metastasis and cerebral infarction cannot cause liver metastasis. Therefore, there's no sequence in part one that ends with the terminal condition. Select the terminal condition, liver metastasis, as the tentative starting point. In this short informational video, we have reviewed starting points one to five that are described step by step in ICD-10, volume two, section 421. Please review this video again and the ICD volume two, section 421 to ensure you understand these five steps. We will cover steps six to eight in another informational video as well as the modification rules. Please keep an eye out for these separate videos. Please review and watch all videos in the series to develop your understanding and skill in ICD-10 manual mortality coding. Thank you for listening to this informational video. I hope it has helped in developing your understanding and skill in ICD-10 manual mortality coding. Thank you and goodbye.